Thank you, church family. If you got a copy of God's Word, would you turn with me back to the book of Colossians? We're going to pick back up with the book of Colossians. We took a break from it last week because I wanted to share some situations or principles or look at God's Word concerning, um, as you know, what happened Tuesday. And let me just ask you to do something. Many times we want to pray for our nation and country. And then when God does something and answers our prayers, do we ever thank him? Do we ever come back and say, Lord, thank you for answering prayer? So I hope that you've done that. I certainly do want to uh, say a word to those that have served our country, our veterans, and, those, uh, and even those who are serving now and those who have served. Thank you for your, your uh, I guess, your contribution to our country and our service. If you are a veteran in here, would you just raise your hand? Do we have any other veterans in here? I know, yes. I want to tell you thank you. Say from the bottom of my heart, we say thank you and we love you very much for allowing us to have the freedoms that we have and uh, praise God for that. Um, I do want to encourage you to be uh, continue to be praying uh, just for Kelly's mother. Um, let me go ahead and I want to go ahead and do that right now and uh, just to lift that up. Father, I thank you, God, as we come to you again, Lord, and for our message today. Father, we ask for healing upon uh, Kelly's mother. We ask God for their family. We just ask for peace. And um, Father, I'm grateful that we can certainly pray whenever there's a special need. I know there are more needs in here. <clears throat> God, you know everyone's heart. And Lord, I pray that today that we can listen with clarity and God that we can hear a word from you and uh, certainly Lord uh, take and what we're going to hear and apply it to our lives thank you Lord so much for your word thank you for the power of your word and God we thank you for that and uh, may it go forth and proclaim what it needs to proclaim so Lord we give you praise God hide this vessel behind the cross and God in the days of during Thanksgiving and Christmas that, Lord, we can use these opportunities, Lord, to minister to folks and also to be ready uh, when we have opportunity to share the good news. Again, Father, I pray for this afternoon as we go out, Lord, I pray that your word as we take the word of God to these folks and, Father, that we show their, our love for them, that we will have the salt and light of the gospel and that we will portray that, God, we represent you, we represent this wonderful church, and that, God, we represent the kingdom of God. So, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. When you have found that, I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. Colossians 1, verse 10. So you follow along in your translation, whether that's a copy of God's word, whether that's on a phone or iPad. You know, it's amazing that we say that now. And, uh, but I encourage you to bring a hard copy of God's word. Hope you still have one. Um, there's something about that. But anyway, Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. Thank you. You may be seated and may God richly bless the reading of His word. I want you will, if you will now, go back to verse 9. You may not remember this, but two weeks ago we talked about the main, the big, one of the big issues of praying for people. How do we pray for people? And what should we be praying for them about? Well, here in chapter, in verse nine, chapter 1, verse 9, we talked about this two weeks ago. And let me read it to you. It says, For this reason, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. And we talked about that. We talked about ways to pray for others. And this is where it came from. But we're going to see the day, we're going to see today why we pray that prayer for those and why we pray for, for, uh, for our folks, for our folks, for you, other believers, for knowledge, for growing in God's Word. Because look at what it says here. We continually ask God to fill you with knowledge. That was one thing we talked about. We talked about knowledge, the knowledge of God's word, the knowledge of growing in God's grace and mercy, but having knowledge. And then we said it turns to wisdom of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. Once we move from knowledge, once we move from that 
and we have it in our head about how we're to live for God, then we apply it to our lives. We talked about that. And that's where wisdom and understanding comes from is we walk through the daily, just daily issues of life. The daily issues of life. You know those daily issues where you get a bill in the mail and you're like, how are we going to pay this? You know the issues of life where you get a phone call and somebody just like Miss Kelly while ago and something's wrong with a family member. Those are real life things and how do we handle that? How do we, how do we walk through that? Um, it, it, it could be something else. It could be a burden. It could be a, a number of issues that we just in life that we have. Therefore, we must pray for each other in governing those decisions, but living out our faith as well. But he says this, that he continually asks for prayer. But why did he do that? Well, this is where we get to in verse 10. He says, I'm, I'm going to pray and continually ask God to fill all believers, to pray for them for knowledge of his will, through wisdom and understanding, to gain understand under that. Why? So that, verse 10, and here it is, applied to our lives. So that you may live 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 we live every day we we are alive we live you are living right now you are alive you're not you're above ground you are living and then it says so that you may live though a life of purpose it says a life worthy of the lord and please him in every way circle this word bearing fruit in every good work and grow, circle this word, and growing in the knowledge of God. And there it is again. There it is again, growing in the knowledge of God. So he gives us here a way that we are to be walking. And this is the title, which way are you walking in Christ? Which way are you walking in life on a daily basis? So if you got your copy of, God, of your, of your bull, uh, uh, worship God bulletin, here you can fill in the notes and I hope that you will. First of all is this, is that we should walk and pray for others and pray for our brothers and sisters to walk worthy of the Lord. As he says here in verse 10, so that you may live a life worthy. Many times we ask God what our purpose is in life, don't we? Or at some point we've asked, Lord, what is your will? Lord, how do we walk worthy of you? I mean, in real life, see, the thing is, too, <clears throat> I want you to go back and remember, those of you that were married at an early age, just like my wife and I, I was 23, she was 21. And you know what? When we stepped out of our parents, under our parents' authority, uh, well, not total of stepping out of under their authority, but stepping out uh, on and uh, building our lives together, you know what? We didn't have any idea what the future was going to hold. Do you remember when you got married? Do you remember when you went on your honeymoon and then all of a sudden the honeymoon, as great as it was, you got back home and all of a sudden you start, you got to start living life. And you, many of you know what I'm talking about. And you, those of you that are young in here that haven't been married yet in one day, but one day are planning to get married and you are, and that's great. That we, all have, we all go through it. And not just, not just that, but just different issues of life. And he says, well, how do I walk and live a life worthy and have purpose in my life? Listen, the, only, the, the greatest purpose in your life and my life that we can ever have is to live a life worthy of the Lord. In this world, you see what gets put on TV about how people live. I don't want to go too much into that, but we know there's a lot of negative stuff out there. We know there's a lot of negative living out there living the wrong way of life and there are consequences to our decisions so i think it would be really smart and have wisdom if we listen and pay attention to what god would have us to say and live through how to live through his word probably it would help from hitting a lot of negative consequences from the decisions that we make right and that's not always bad look there are consequences to good decisions. And that's where we want to get to, right? That's what we want to have. That's what we want to teach our children. That's what we want to teach our grandchildren. And listen, parents and grandparents, if you do not teach your children, and by the way, we're not totally all or totally responsible for growing your child to live. You are. Homes are. Moms and dads you are. And so I'm laying out for you today even a plan for you with your children and grandchildren 
for the future of how we are to live and live a life worthy of the Lord. So he says worthy. He says live a life worthy. How many times have we ever heard this statement? Well, I'm just not worthy enough. Woo, I know what my life's been like. I'm just not worthy to live for the Lord. I'm just, I'm just not worthy to, to teach a Sunday school class or I'm not worthy to... I'm not worthy maybe to get up out of my pew and come down here and pray. I'm not even worthy to walk into that church. I'm not even worthy to go and take. By. Listen, there is a point where we get to a point where we are to live a life worthy and go ahead and stop saying what we can't do, what we're short of, and say, Lord, with your help, I want to live a life that's worthy to you. But he says here, the word walk or live a life, as I've said, refers to a person's daily conduct. It means a mind that is controlled, listen carefully, it means that it is a mind controlled by knowledge, wisdom, and understanding which produces a life worthy of the Lord. <clears throat> a person could think, how could anyone walk worthy of the Lord? But this is a teaching in Scripture. I get it. I do understand that comment I made just a moment ago. Lord, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy to receive kindness and goodness and Man, I've, you know, when people give you a compliment, I understand that there is that, that sense, and we'll get to it, that, as you see it up there, in that humility, and that's the way we should be, but realize in Christ we are worthy because we are child of king. You matter to God. And so he says, he says so walk and live is just simply, simply a person's daily conduct, but also being controlled under the Holy Spirit through knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. 1 Thessalonians 2.12 says this, Walk in a manner of the God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. You know what? God doesn't want us just to sit in a pew or sit at home and do nothing. You know why many of you are brilliant and have a lot of wisdom in your particular career field? Why would you think that you would probably, and you, I know that people don't want to, Say, you know, don't look at me. I get that. I understand the humility because I know a lot of you in this room and I know. But how did, you, how did you get wisdom and knowledge in your job? If you are retired, you are really a so-called expert in what you've done. And listen, you could, if, I came to, if, I, if I had to ask something about coaching or teaching, I'd see Doug Crane. One of them. And there's other. And his son. If, 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 I, uh, but if, if I wanted to talk to... Uh, if I wanted to talk to Brad about engineering, I'd talk to him. If I wanted to talk to, I don't know, I don't know, uh, uh, teachers, and I don't know if we have any lawyers in here. I don't know if we have, I don't know what all exactly all of us do, but, but you would have, you would go, there. why would I ask them about a particular issue? Or maybe I'd ask them, you know what, how do I handle this in my house? How do I, you go to people that you know that have wisdom, that have learned, and how did they do that, though? Because they lived it. They lived out their life. As you grow young, you know what? I hope I'm, I'm, I hope I'm far more along in my maturity of Christ than when I was when I was 21, 22 years of age. So it's a living daily. And so that's what he talks about. So he, so, so he says from Scripture, 1 Thessalonians 2.12, Walk in a manner worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. People to me, want to see genuine authenticity in people's lives. And yes, one aspect of being a Christian is living, seeking, and striving to live a godly life. I tell you right now, since it's on my heart and on my mind, don't let up, don't quit trying. Ask God to, under His Spirit to lead you and to lead your family. Pray to the Lord and ask the Lord on a daily occasion, Lord, help me and teach me how to lead my family. Because that's walking and that's living. And the reason that many of we have experts in their field, they know what to tell you and know how to handle situations is because they have gone before us and they have been through the fires and testing to know how to live life in that particular career. If someone were to come and ask you, you're a Christian, right? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. You're a Christian, right? Well, how, tell, me how, tell me how a Christian is to live. Well, a Christian should be this. Right? No, no, no. Here's what God's word says. 
So if you got your notes here, look at this. Number one is in humility. In humility. Ephesians chapter four, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. I didn't put these in here because I wanted you to pay attention and not fall asleep, okay? <laughs> Ephesians 4, write this next to that word humility. Ephesians 4, 1, 2, and 3. It says, as a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Listen, that is not weakness. That is not being weak. Matter of fact, that takes a lot of strength to be a humble and gentle person. Huh. And he says, bearing with one another in love. He says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So he says, live a life that is worthy. Number two is this under there. It talks about in not only in uh, humility, but in purity. In purity. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 13. He says, let us behave decently. Moms and dads with young children, pay careful attention to this. Because the scripture says, and the younger children that are in here, listen, behave. <laughs> Let us behave decently. Wait a minute, what's the heard some? Uh, say it louder, okay. Let us behave decently. <laughs> I hear you. Say it louder for the people in the back. You people in the back, y'all are, why, why do y'all sit back there? I mean, good night. You got, I mean, why do y'all sit back there? All you lazy Baptists back there, I'm messing with you. You know I'm messing with you. Don't take that personal. Come on, folks. But it's funny, though. Y'all get scared to death to come sit up here in front. Y'all scared I'm going to spit on you or something? Is that what it is? I got a lot of thoughts I could go into, but I need to move on, man. I mean, it's funny. But anyway, he, sa but he says purity. Listen to it. He says, let us behave decently as in the daytime. Well, how do I do that? How do I behave decently? Well, he, he's going to give you right here. He's just going to tell us right now what it's not like to, uh, to where, where, let me use this phrase, where to unbehave. He says, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery. That word debauchery, it means an extreme indulgence in bodily or sexual pleasures. Not in dissension, running your mouth to run other things down, or jealousy. And I didn't have this, but you can write verse 14 down. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Do you know, and listen, I see this more and more again where this is being lifted up, and it's, it's not really... In this list, but impurity is the mouth of people. Blatant, filthy, unbehaving language is the norm today on TV, on radio, out of coaches' mouths, out of, you know, it, it's, we have turned this in that you are a great, by the way, Doug, you, you know this, Doug, and those other, but we, in the sporting realm, we have come a nation that has highlighted and fans of teams where people, we just, we praise filthy four-letter words. Now, some of you that don't watch sports or whatever, no, it's not just there either. It's on, it's on TV. It's in political people's mouths. Not all of them. It's in people that are in higher leadership. It is people, listen, it is not, you are not a man if you curse like a sailor. Now, if there's a sailor in here, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a figure of speech. And I listen, I, I, I know life's tough. And I know, well, you don't understand. You never, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, the Bible says that if I'm in spirit control, that I'm going to try to do my best under the Spirit's guy. The Spirit's not going to lead you to use four-letter words. Hello? I don't, the, the, listen, the culture does not dictate how we live. We live in order to dictate culture. 
Because I always ask you this question. What did Jesus say on the cross? If you want to know how to use language or about language, filthy language, what did Jesus do? Is there ever recorded in there one word of a four-letter, disrespectful, ungodly word that Jesus used under the heaviest persecution or under the heaviest amount of pressure? He gives us, I know we're human. He was perfect. I get that. Yes, he was. And he, but we can overcome. Now, this is not a lesson on if you cuss, you're going to hell. If you cuss, you're doing it. Listen, I know that. There's a lot. There, there, there's, we, the Holy Spirit will change us and transform us. And if you let a word out, that's not a good enough excuse, but just repent. Repent, but he says in, in him, live a life, part of it, he says, carousing and drunkenness and sexual immorality and debauchery. You know what, it, it, as much as I am a fan of my teams that I pull for, can I, can I tell this to you, those of you who are fans? What we see on TV, a lot of things that we see, there's so much drunkenness in the games, there's so much filthy language, there's so much stuff. Even ESPN commentators on college game day, it's, it's unbelievable. I don't really watch much of it anymore. I'm not saying you, if you watch it, you're wrong. Or whatever, but I'm just saying, just, you tell me if you watch stuff and watch political stuff, watch stuff, watch, I don't know, all these other different things that we watch. It's all over TV. But understand that we are to live a life of purity with our mouth, with our bodies. I think you get the point. But that's how we live. That's how we, well, that's, well, I, if, I, if I live that life, guy, I get, I get made fun of. Well, great. Did they kill you? Did they take, you, did they take your life away? How about just laugh? How about just say, you know what, you're right. If, hey, if that's uncool, then I'm going to be uncool for the Lord. Because I can tell you this, the Lord went all the way for you and all the way. See, it's an opportunity to witness. Jesus died on the cross. Let me ask you something. Could you be nailed to the cross and, 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 and have not be able to say, you know, words and stuff? Listen, I, I serve a God that's like that. And I'm not meaning ugly to you. And I'm, don't be rude to him. But just say, you know what? I don't have to use that language. I'm not weak because I'm in, in Christ. I'm a, I'm a creation of God. Then he says, in contentedness means whatever situation. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians uh, 7, verse 17. Whew. See, God's Word gives us, if we will read and look and see and study, we can see from where God's Word, He gives us these things. So, 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Nevertheless, each person should live... As a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them. In other words, be contented. Be content with what you have. Be content. In, and that word necessarily doesn't just mean that I have to live a certain life and never, never have goals, never have. No, no. It, it, it be thankful for what you do have. And then he says, live by faith. How, how do I walk a life worthy of the Lord? Walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we live by faith and not by sight. All right, he also says in good works. Ephesians 2.10, we've been created to do good works in Christ Jesus. And then he says different from the world is another way we live. Ephesians 4, 17 through 32, write this down. Ephesians 4, 13, 17, excuse me, 17 through 32. I, can't, I don't have time to read all of that, but it says Ephesians 4, 17. Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. Look at this. I don't have time to read it all. Make sure you write it down, but just a little bit of a taste. So I tell you this, and, insist, and I preached on this recently, within the last two or three months, I think. Insist on in the Lord that you must no longer live as Gentile do in the futile thinking of their mind. And then it goes over it goes over to verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but what is helpful for others, building them up. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So there it is. You, get, you go back and look at it. Go back and study it. And another thing is in love. We are to walk worthy in love. Ephesians 5 verse 2. <coughs> and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And then lastly is this, to walk in truth. To walk in truth. 
the truth of his word. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. How do I know what truth is? Well, you have the Bible. Paul, when we, when we looked at the overview of Colossians, we saw that the, the Greek philosophy and, uh, and in Colossae there where these people dealt with philosophies that weren't true and things like that, with I mean, just different things that they were being taught. We always got it by, we always look at it through the word of God and to know what truth is. But the basics of it is you just know, you know Jesus Christ, Jesus, you won't find any error in him. And we see that through his word and that we live in truth. Third John 3. Third John 3. Third John is just one very simple uh, reading just with about 11 13 verses in it it's just a real short book third john 3 says something like this it gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth telling how you continue to walk in it to walk in truth live a life that is worthy number two not only live a life that is worthy, but number two is live a life that is pleasing to God. <laughs> pleasing to God. And this is what it simply means. We are to remove anything that muddies the living water. Worldly relationships, church jargon, legalistic attitudes. We're to live pleasing, free lives unto the Lord. What am I going to do to please the Lord? One simple thing is, you know what? My mom and dad, my mom and my dad, when they asked me to do something, if I did it, it, brought, it was very pleasing around the house. You know what I mean, Scott? And when I didn't, and I was not living pleasing to the Lord, I'm not like some of you, I'm not, it's not like some of, you, some of the parents in this generation. I'm not being ugly. But let me tell you something. That switch and that paddle, that attention getter, Help me out a lot more than just putting me in a corner. Now, you can say what you want to say, and we live in a nation, and I mean, all this stuff, how we raise our children. Let me tell you something. You can, you can discipline now, or you're going to be panicking in chaos later. I, I, I'm just here to tell you, I know we, we live in a soft generation, but I tell you what, I can handle, I, I, I can get, I can, I better be quiet, but I can get a little child's attention. And I don't mean that ugly. That's not bad parenting. That's smart. But I mean, it's 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 ple I, I, when I was not pleasing to the Lord, I and my my I mean my, my my dad would do this every time that he would discipline me. Yes, I, I it didn't feel good. <laughs> yep, I was in that generation. It didn't feel good. But you know what my dad would do though? Invite me and my sister, he'd come and hold us. He never used his hand, by the way. Because he wanted us to see that his hand was the place of love. That's why I used a switch or a belt or a... <laughs> but he'd come back around and hold me in his hands and say, I love you, son. You know what? I have to think that the Lord, the way he disciplines us, I don't know if he uses a hand. I'll be here. When have you ever had a hand slap you out of heaven? You're walking all along. Wham! You just all somebody says, somebody looks. What happened to him, man? He just fell over out there. Oh, the Lord hit him. No, no. No, but I can tell you this. You can, listen, you can crawl up in the, in the arms of the Lord and he'll never let you go. Remember that? Remember these times, guys? I tell you, I'll be on a daily basis. We can crawl up into the hands of God. By the way, his left hand, his right hand, and his feet both had nails in it. Because he died for you, and he died for me. Let's pray. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to bow your heads, but go ahead and stand. Keep your heads bowed at this time, please, because I just don't want any distractions. And not that open, having your eyes open is, but I, sometimes our eyes just wander. But just right there in this, the quietness of where you are. Let me ask a question to all of us. And let's just say for us as believers and living to know Christ, is your life reflecting a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing unto the Lord? We'll finish this next week, God willing. We'll look at the other aspects. But is, your, is, your, is my life, you know, it's like take, a, take an inventory of your life right now. Is there anything, am I living 
as the Lord would have me to live. It, it, and you know what? Most of the time, we probably are going to think of something. The Holy Spirit's going to put something on your mind to say, hey, you know what? You need to, we need to take care of this. And don't be afraid of it. Take care of it. But are you living a life that is worthy of living for the Lord? And thank goodness for His grace. But what about today as a, as a person? Is, is there a person here that may not know the Lord? The reason you can't live a pure life, the reason this stuff maybe not makes sense, or, or it's because we don't know the Lord as our Lord and Savior. And today could be a day where you could come to know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe God leading you to be a part of this church, to, to come and be a part and join this sweet fellowship. Whatever your decision is, it may not be one of those, but listen, I'm here at the front. If there's a certain situation or a certain thing you need us to pray for, here's one more time an opportunity to do that. But whatever your decision is, be obedient to it today. Father, in these moments that we have together, final moments that we have together, and Lord, as we come into this invitation, Lord, I pray today that God will be faithful in being obedient to you. Father, thank you for your gracious grace and love. And Father, I know there may be some of those who are struggling in here. And Father, that's not, a, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I just know in something, in this many people, there's probably some things that we just don't feel comfortable about sharing or, or but Lord, you know our hearts. And God, I pray that we could be honest with ourselves. And God, that we can be real transparent worshipers of you so God have your way thank you Father for your faithfulness in Jesus name Brother Jim's going to lead us our praise team's going to lead us on the very first note you come Patrick's here at the front 